You're listening to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro, where we share topics that will inspire business growth and help you stay ahead of advances in technology before they become mainstream. This episode is sponsored by Ingram Micro Expantage, the game-changing platform that will transform your business potential and reshape how customers see you. Our next two guests are both tech rock stars. The first is a transformational visionary. Sanjeev Sahu serves as Executive Vice President and Chief Digital Officer of Ingram Micro. In his role, Sahu leads Ingram Micro's strategic efforts to accelerate the development of innovative world-class customer and user experiences. On digital transformation, Sahu says, digital transformation done right requires an organization to be both aggressively digital and amazingly human. Digital transformation is not about technology alone. It's about mindset and about embracing a spirit of innovation. Ray Wong is a tech prognosticator, author, and is the founder and chairman and principal analyst of Constellation Research. He co-hosts Disrupt TV, a weekly enterprise tech and leadership webcast that averages over 50,000 views per episode and authors a business strategy and technology blog that has received millions of page views per month. On this episode of B2B Tech Talk, we're going to turn the tables and allow guest host Sanjeev Sahu to interview Ray Wong. Gentlemen? Hey, so we're live here in Las Vegas here at the Ingram Micro Event. I'm here with Sanjeev. What's going on? Great. How are you? Yeah, I'm amazed. I, I love Las Vegas. I'm back here. Can you believe that? You, you almost like live in Las Vegas, you know, don't you? I do. I spent about 30 weeks out of the year wow. here. California should not get my state taxes. Do you gamble? No, I don't gamble. You gamble with technology. I gamble with technology. Exactly. Awesome. It's been, I can't believe it's been 12 years we know each other. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. And it's amazing to see all the things that you've built over the years. So, What's going on in your world? You know, the biggest thing is probably AI. It's probably platforms. It's probably, you know, where software is going. You know, it's, it's a part of everyone's lives. Well, what do you think uh, is a platform? Everybody talks about marketplace, platform. And what do you think? What's your, what's your thought on that? Look, if you build a platform correctly, it's really about making it easier for everybody on all sides, right? The vendor, the supplier, the employee, the partner, all that becomes important. And of course, the customer. And if you put that together, then you really have a platform. But most people say, oh, we've got a platform and it doesn't work for more than one side. And that doesn't make a platform. You're right. Yeah. So what have you built? <laughs> well, you know, it seems like something that you are talking about, you know. So, you know, at Ingram we had like lots and lots of data. You know, we had more than 40 years of data and we just focusing on creating an amazing experience. Imagine creating a single pane of glass and take all of the complexity, all of the friction away where you can buy hardware, software, cloud subscriptions all into one platform. So we really are focusing on building that experience and that that entire experience platform is called Xvantage. So we have been working on building Xvantage, you know, in Ingram Micro and, and rolling it out. You know, that's one of the toughest things, right? You'd buy hardware and then you'd have to buy services separately and then you might have some come in and install it separately and then you're like, I want to move to the cloud. All those things, you're saying go away? Just go away. Imagine you have one platform, you are a reseller or a partner, you come here, you can the same shopping cart, you can actually have, buy a hardware, you can have cloud, you can have subscriptions, you can have everything. Wait, you can, can you one, handle different pricing models? Different pricing can models. discounts? Discounts, you know, you can actually handle co-terming, partial upgrades, all of this. So really take all the complexity of the backend out, you know, and do that. So that's why we are, we are super, you know, happy about it and doing, uh, launching this platform. One, one contract? One contract, you know. Wow. So, so we are working on a lot of this, you know, complexities out, but, but, I want to touch back on something you said. You know, we talked about platforms. I mean, everywhere I go, people are talking about AI and data. But AI is not new. You know, if somebody asks me, what is AI? I call AI is like agile intelligence, not artificial intelligence. You know why agile? You cannot take a year or two to learn intelligence. It doesn't work, you know. So agile intelligence is how humans and machines can work together. And it really gives the intel for the business. What do you think about that? Oh, I think you're completely right. I mean, when we think about automation, when we think about AI, it's really about where we have full intelligent automation, intelligent AI. But then a lot of it is really our ability to augment and work with uh, machines. So how do you actually augment machines with humans? How do we enhance their capability? Um, 
Why do we make exceptions? Why do we break rules? Like this happens all the time. Those are things that you pick up and that's what we do when we augment a machine with a human. But then we also augment the human with a machine and we make their lives easier. They get to move more quickly, they can move faster. And then the last piece is how do we actually have pure humans actually do work, right? When do you actually put a human in the process? You want a full experience? Uh, you know, do you want to keep a human in the loop so the machines don't take over? But you get the idea, right? And so how do we put all these things in play? Yeah, yeah, you're right. And that's one of the topics that I have been thinking about, like, you know, this treating a culture of innovation, you know, it, it, it's not easy, you know, like the heart of any transformation is human. You cannot take human out because it starts with people, you know, and, and one of the things that you have to focus on is the mindset, you know, and you know this, you know, like a lot of the digital transformations, we talk a lot about digital, digital transformation. Yeah. And most of them don't work. No, you know, we most of them fail, and and well, it, why do they fail? I think. I mean, in, you've worked on three big projects through your career. Yeah. Why do they fail? I think few few factors. Ray, why does it fail? And number one is mindset. You know, like it really we do not want to change. Change is hard. Oh, no. And for larger companies, if you have the bias towards what you know, you don't want to navigate. You know, and and companies when they are doing well. They don't look at the opportunity gap because yeah. competition come out from anywhere and one fine day, yep. you're done. You, you know this. We, I, I heard you talking. More than 50% of the Fortune 500 companies oh. have disappeared in the last uh, 20 years. Oh, yeah. Second factor is the focus on value. A lot of the yeah. people think, oh, digital transformation is moving an enterprise app to cloud, working on this next AI algorithm, oh. doing something shiny. But shiny technology is pointless without value. Yeah. And this focus on value, I feel, is missing. You know, you can ask anybody, we are doing digital transformation. Oh, we moved 500 enterprise applications to cloud. Yep. Okay, what is the revenue growth no. and the incremental operating income that you have provided? Nobody can answer. No, they, they just did the shift to a new channel. They failed to talk about a business model. And then they don't even have a monetization model. Absolutely. Right? So there's nothing to measure. And you talk a lot about this digital dichotomy and the models and, and there, there are digital immigrants and digital native companies and a lot of the companies are aspiring to be you know, digital natives and tech friendly. What is your advice for, for such companies? Yeah, I think back to your point, the most important thing is to really think about the business model, right? What are you measuring? What are you trying to accomplish, right? And once you have that in place, then you can think about, does the digital channel serve me? Right? Does the digital channel provide additional value? What am I getting in terms of benefit from digitization? Right? If all you're doing is just getting it onto a cloud or onto a channel, that doesn't solve the problem. But if you're able to craft a brand new experience or if you're able to craft a brand new way to getting data and insights and bringing that together, or you have a way to actually start building intelligence, then you have something that's useful. You're right. And I think what I feel is that this whole digitization has to be continuous. It's not like you start digitization and you stop. Oh. That's the biggest mistake we make. There's no stop sign because technology will keep on changing and coming, right? But one of the things we have done is create DigiOps, right? You know, where you really need an operational spirit yep. where as you are creating technology, they're also capturing value. And, you know, it is funny. We call it the technologist, you know, create, call it the art of possible where you can do what is with technology. And the ops create the art of feasible. And when you put them together, they come up with what is actionable. That's the continuous loop we do. And I, and I actually tell my team that we all should put the hats of a chief value officer. Yes. Whatever doesn't create value, it doesn't matter. It can be the best algorithm in the world. Yeah. It doesn't provide any value to, to us. Yeah. You know, one of the interesting things you said, uh, and I've heard you say this many times, is that you spent the last years listening to what customers want. What did customers tell you that was important? So last year when I was in the same conference, I was new to Ingram Micro. I only had... 300 long days of experience in distribution. I was pretty fairly new. And then they all said, can you treat us as one customer? Oh, Take the friction out because we go to you to do technology solutions, the hardware solution business. We come to you on a separate platform and unit for doing cloud business. And they are not talking to each other. The platforms don't talk to each yeah. other. How can you create a seamless, frictionless, experience for us. This is one of the biggest challenge in the industry today. So taking the friction out from the path to purchase, taking, creating a single pane of glass where they can do everything, transaction, interaction. You know, a lot of the times our partners are interacting in different marketplaces. 
but we wanted to create a platform. So we listened to their feedback and said, today in this conference, we're announcing, you know, creating Xvantage platform, which truly, truly creates a unified experience for hardware, software, cloud subscriptions, unified catalog, unified search, unified experience, it's fully integrated. That's what we are excited Wait, about. That's never been done before, Sanjay. We think this is going to be revolutionized distribution. And to, to, your, to your point, you know, like we listened to the customers. Then we looked into our technology teams about what is possible. So what is feasible, what is possible, and create an actionable plan. And we have an amazing team who really works very hard to actually provide solutions. That's why we are super excited about this. Wow. So when we look back at this event uh, next year, what will you think will be the most interesting things for you in terms of your engagement, in terms of your conversations with customers? I think we will hopefully be trying to define a new way of interacting for distribution industry, where today Xvantage is still relatively new, but we want to make sure, my hope, is Xvantage becomes the norm, the new norm that sets standards of the distribution industry where you have a single pane of glass, you can interact, not transact, you can take complexity out, you can have a frictionless path to purchase, you can do everything, all things technology in a platform. It's like having distribution in your screen, in your pocket. So you're basically doing the Steve Jobs of like a thousand songs in your pocket. What's the equivalent here in this model? It's just the ecosystem. You're doing the same ecosystem like iTunes, like a, a hardware solutions, technology solutions platform, a cloud platform, like all into one plan. That's like launching the iPhone. So everything it's you need in tech in your pocket is what you're doing. In, in one platform, seamless, easy, and it's customized. Yep you know, based on, 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 on the reseller. So that's what it, it's exciting. That's very exciting. So when do we get to see the sneak peek of the product? Uh, in this conference tomorrow. At the keynote? Tomorrow, yeah, the keynote we are going to talk about. And I think one of the things I'm talking about is really this whole culture of innovation, mindset, yep. the speed, you know, to, to do. Last year, we didn't have a platform. You know, we started building the platform and now we have a platform, we created the experience. So we'll preview the platform and then we have a plan in the next few weeks to onboard and give access to our customers to, to this platform. So that's what we're excited about. You know, what I'm really excited about is platforms, right? And once you have the platform, you've got all the parties in the platform, you're not able to get to better insights. What insights do you imagine is going to happen once this platform's lit up, the data is in place, you've got transactional data from 40 years, what does that mean? What can I start seeing that I wasn't yeah. be able to do, you know, even 30 days ago? I mean, that that's a great question. You think about this as a distributor, we actually sit between our resellers and the OEMs and the vendors, oh, yeah. right? Apart from just aggregating and solutioning, one of the biggest things we could do is stand behind those partners, make them better, make them profitable. It's almost like a $50 billion company helping them to build their business better with the insights. What are the products that are working? What is the company landscape? What is not working? How they can plan their you know, roadmap? There are a lot of things we can actually help them to plan. That is what they're asking so for. So you predict buying cycles, refresh cycles, yeah, right? I mean, where it makes sense to actually do discounts, where it makes sense to actually promote differently. Yeah, so we are starting with some insights. Keep in mind, insights a lot without customization and personalization become noise. Yes. So we want to know what is relevant for which partner and then push it to them. That's what we are working on. Wonderful. This is amazing. Thank you, Ray. So any, any last advice that you have for the audience and companies, anything? What does Ray Wang tell? What's the next big thing in tech? Oh, you know, one of the things that we think is really interesting is really taking that data that we're talking about in these platforms. And what we really want to get to is move from data to decisions. A lot of times what we can do right now is we can at least predict what might happen. In the future, we might be able to prevent or mitigate risk. And once we get to that point, we can start building decision engines that do next best action. We think that's where AI is going to be. And the biggest challenge with AI right now is really the data, right? And the confidence level. Are you okay with 95% confidence for that match? Yeah. If you're okay with that, that's great. Are you okay with 70%? If the answer is no, then we're going to have to relook at it. And we're going to learn when we actually apply what data to what problems and how much data. And that's really going to determine how we're successful in the world of AI. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the lessons that transformation teaches us to be imperfect, but be a little more perfect every cycle. Same with data. 100% perfection 
and 75% execution is not as good as 75% perfection and 100% execution. execution. We need to keep on incrementally be better. That's what data taught us. Yes, it is. And that's what the same transformation. We try to be incrementally better. The same thing you said, Ray, that we are, as we are moving from data to decisions, we are moving from transaction to interaction. Yes. How can we create that enriching experience for our partners to take complexity out, make their jobs easier and help them so that we could really have a win-win ecosystem here and help our partners and our, our vendor partners as well. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing the platform and congratulations. Thank you so much, Ray, and thanks for being here. We appreciate you and looking forward to chatting to you more in the All future. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. You've been listening to Ingram Micro's B2B Tech Talk. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode and you want to continue the conversation online, use hashtag B2B Tech Talk.